<laughs> when you see the truth, you don't have to try not to live a lie. Pretty people don't try not to be ugly. Pretty people don't try to be pretty. If you're trying to be pretty, you must be ugly. Can we start with a real simple concept? Like, if we can't agree on this simple concept that we're about to explain, walk real slowly through, because there should be no disagreements on such a simple concept. <laughs> what is in your head other than the past? And when I refer to the past, I mean past experiences, circumstances, and situations that you have encountered, been through, heard about. Past information that you have read, heard, seen, <laughs> slightly come in contact with. And we have like really quick channels of information like we're getting information in like 15 second spurts from unverified uncredible sources these people you could never put them on your bibliography as your scholarly reference because they do not exist in the world of academia <laughs> and it's not about a name and it's not about any of that it's, it's, you, it, absolutely not if you're going to adopt something as the truth that you're living by and you're professing as truth to other people and telling them that they should live by, you should do a little research. You should have a little background information. You should have did a little investigating before you based your entire life and recommended other people that you cared about to say you care about to base their entire life on something that you heard. What is in your head other than the past experiences, the past information, the past understanding, the past paradigms, the past superstitions, the past imaginations, the past fantasies, the past illusions, the past lies? What else is there? And please, if there is an answer, put it in the comments. What else is in your head other than the past experiences that you unconsciously and consciously harbor within yourself? Nothing. So when you come in contact with new information, when you come in contact with a new concept, a new paradigm, when you are shifting from a belief to something that is based on knowledge and being extended through wisdom, and you take this information in, the minute that you run it through your system of thought, this information that was new becomes tainted by the old filter of your past understanding, past belief systems, past level of consciousness, which is why we're called to die to the old man so that the new man can rise. We're called to live single-eyed. We're called to be one minded whole we're called to the state of perfection which is not to not make mistakes it's to rise in consciousness to a state above thought where you can be misled where you can be misguided where you can be deceived where you can deceive yourself understand if the information passes through the old filter it's passing through the past understanding and if it does not align with what you have already thought to be true you will write it off as false 
And if that is the case, then how can new information take you to new destinations when every time you come in contact with new information, you run it through the old processor and, com and, and, and you compare it to your past understanding and your past beliefs to see if this is something that you should partner with. And if it doesn't align with something that you know, you reject it. And then you wonder why you keep getting more of the same. You keep getting more of the same and you keep going in circles because every time you're offered the opportunity to change, to make a shift, you go with what's familiar out of a fear of what is foreign. True indeed, you, you hate walking in circles around the mountain. But you are afraid to cross that body of water and go to the land that is promised to you because you don't know how dangerous and how long and treacherous the trip is going to be. But you do know, you know the path around the mountain. And don't act like we don't think like this. Don't act, don't even act like what I'm talking about right now is something that people do not deal with. Don't act like you have never went to a, a, a female or a, a man and, and tried to give yourself to that person in relationship and that person rather give themselves in relationship to somebody that they were familiar with and dissatisfied with when they said that they genuinely enjoyed you. Oh, I want to be with you, but you know, I just, I'm scared to take the risk. I mean, uh, we, we even got stupid cliches for this. I mean, you man, man, you better go with the devil that you know. And it's cheaper to keep her. <laughs> like it's all over, it's all over our conversation. Like, and that's the that's the thing. Like, if you if you'll stop talking to yourself about what you believe and you'll start watching yourself for what you do to identify what it is that you genuinely believe, because what you do is the genuine testament to what you believe. You will tell yourself anything, just like you'll tell other people anything when you're on the hot seat. Please stop acting like honesty is something that's natural to our carnal beings. Stop playing. You be scared. You be scared of being rejected. You be scared of being exposed. You be you, you be you be you be concerned. Yeah, you know we don't like to accept the fact that we get scared. You know you be concerned. You. Oh. Wondering how this is going to play out for you in the long run. <laughs> like, stop, stop. Because the minute that we identify it, the minute that we actually take accountability for it existing, then we can genuinely see how stupid it is to carry the stuff that we carry and we can drop it. It's insane that people who don't like religion aren't madly in love with Jesus. Jesus hated religion. If if Jesus was a physical character, I don't understand why one who hates religion would not devote their entire life to the man. Because he gave them hell. <laughs> Everything they thought they knew, he said something different. And he was genuinely the expression of the one that they said they followed. And now you as a Christian, say you follow Jesus, but Jesus didn't follow the church. Jesus and the church was beefing because Jesus was following God. And the church was saying that they was following the same God that Jesus was following, but they never agreed on anything. And I can only identify with that. And it's only so comical to me because I align my life with what Jesus said to be true about me, you, this universe, the father, everything. And you know who has the biggest issue with what I'm saying? It's not people who don't go to church. It's not people who say that they they don't follow Jesus. It's the people who say that their life is devoted to Christ Jesus. And they be madly offended when I say the things that Jesus said. But maybe that's why in the story, in the mythological story, <laughs> it was the truth. They got Jesus crucified by the religious people that he came to save anyway. I understand when y'all got the narrative a little mixed up and y'all be listening to people, you know, convince y'all that it was God's wrath and, and God's love for his sons and daughters of the world that caused him to send the son 
the only begotten son of heaven down to be crucified on your behalf. I, 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 I get it. I, I get that the story is getting mangled. But inside of what Jesus said, if you're saying that you're a follower of Christ, then don't follow the people that was mad at Christ the whole time and ultimately sent him to the cross in the story. Follow the one who saved the people. See, look, it's simple. As a student, when I'm looking at the story and I'm looking at the conflict inside of the story, there's the antagonist and there is the protagonist. You know, in, in this story, I'm, I'm looking at the group of people who say that they know they've written a whole bunch of laws for themselves that they themselves cannot follow. And then there is a man who says, hey, man, look, y'all need to stop that. That y'all alone. Y'all need to turn around. Y'all y'all need to repent. Hey, the kingdom is not out here. The kingdom is not over there. The kingdom is within. Hey, look. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Hey, look, everything that you see me do, you can do. Greater works will you do because you have been given everything that I have. You just aren't aware of it. You just don't steal away to go and meditate and, and, and commune with your father. You just don't dedicate your life to only doing and saying what you hear the father on the inside say. But for real, rather than people learning and genuinely processing new information inside of meditative states that are superior to realms of thought where illusions and erroneous ideas run rampant, we think that we can play judge, not only judge to other people, not only judge to moments, not only judge to the quality of ideas, uh, judge to everything. You play judge to everything. You keep the gavel in your hand. Somebody offers you information that you've never heard before, and you run it through the filter of your past experience and understanding to see if it's something that you're going to receive and apply. Since when, you know, I thought you came to learn. But in learning, you came in contact with information that was foreign and you found that you really have a greater appetite for familiarity than you do for truth. You found that you rather be under the impression that you're in a comfortable, safe place rather than walk in the faith that the one within you is your refuge and you are always divinely protected with a hedge around you that keeps any opposition or any idea of an opposition away from you. I thought you said you got a purpose. I thought you said you were called. I thought you said that there was one who was good in nature that extended this goodness to you and wanted you to extend it to others so that they could walk in the same awareness and light that you have discovered within yourself and join you in this inner peace that surpasses anything that they've ever thought they could understand. How could you have been called to that? But you... Are, also be called to being so busy trying to keep yourself from sinning and trying to keep yourself from backsliding, trying to keep yourself from going back into the behaviors that you said you seen the dysfunction in and didn't want to continue in and you gave up, said you casted your burdens and your cares upon the Lord. You went up there to the altar and you sung the song and you cried and you you said everything that they told you to say. And then later on, you're what? You're wrestling with old habits? You're wrestling with old cravings? You're finding yourself returning to old dysfunctions? And we're going to say that 
you genuinely saw the value in a new way? You genuinely saw the dysfunction and error in the old way? No, what you did was in a moment experience new information, ran it through the filter, some of it got passed, and it had an influence on you, an emotional reaction, an emotional influence on you. And as long as you could sustain that mental state that you were in, in that moment, you was up there worried about whether your boyfriend or girlfriend was cheating on you, or you hadn't got caught cheating, and you were up there at the altar, and you was praying that, that they would take you back. And you told that classic lie that we all have told. God, if you get me out of this, I'll never do it again. I serve you forever. I'll be faithful. Change my ways. All trauma is, is I have misidentified myself by a moment that I did not desire, but called to myself in the ignorance of how universal truth and universal principles operate. Everything around me and everything within me. Therefore, I now live through the broken understanding that this moment has made me what you see me and experience me as today. All trauma is, is living through the lie of a moment, identifying yourself by a moment. And living in the present and projecting a future on yourself through a past moment. <laughs> when you see the truth, you don't have to try not to live a lie. Pretty people don't try not to be ugly. Pretty people don't try to be pretty. If you're trying to be pretty, you must be ugly. <laughs> and understand, you've said that you had teachers. You've said that you've had mentors. You've said that you've had leaders, but everything that those people said to you, you ran through the filter of your own understanding, your entire existence in the physical plane. You have been under the leadership of your own shaky, shifty, forever changing, emotional driven self. The person that you think you are has drove you to act the way you do. It's called you, caused you to feel how you feel. You say you feel how you feel because of what they did. But if you didn't attach yourself to them and didn't identify yourself by the relationship or the past history that you and this person have, when they did the thing that they did in the present, would you have seen yourself as broken and confused moving into the future like you did? So was it them doing the thing or was it you doing the thing? Was it you attaching yourself to another entity outside of yourself that you were called to be an expression of love to, but instead you became dependent on for the very virtue that is only found on the inside of you? You know how frustrating it is to wake up and ask somebody for something that they do not have and that they cannot give you every day, especially if this person cares about you. Understand, if when somebody cares about you, they desire for you to be happy, content, fulfilled, uplifted, encouraged, motivated, right-minded, aligned with truth inside of your purpose all of that this is what a person who genuinely is loving you and caring for you is doing and we will go in with our selfish nature to partnerships with people who are doing that and get upset with them and become offended with them disconnect from them all because they would not submit to one of our selfish, lowly desires for ourself that was only gonna satisfy us temporarily. 
And we might have didn't know that, but they did. And when they wouldn't drop the truth of who they knew us to be and partner with the lie of who we were telling ourselves to be, man, I need that money. I, if I don't have that money, I ain't going to be. Ha, da, 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 da. You know, you done fell out with somebody who genuinely cares and loves you. I used to do my daddy like this. Man, if you don't, if you don't pay, if you don't pay to get me out of jail, if you don't pay this purge, if you don't pay this bond, then you don't love me. But what my father knew is if he saved me from everything, I wouldn't learn the correction needed in those moments to not make the same mistakes again. So not only would he have costed himself more money later on down the line, he would have costed me more trouble too. Because he would have been training me that there were no consequences for my actions. So sometimes I would call and he would beat me crying about the situation I was in because he knew that it would corrupt my growth to come and save me from something that I had put myself in after I had been given good counsel to not do so. Understand that's what it is. That's what love is. Love is not submitting to your every request. Love is not dancing around your fantasy land, giving you the things that you require on command. That's that's servitude. That's customer service. That's a slave. That's some that's something else. That's other stuff. You're talking about love. You're talking about unconditional acceptance. You're talking about approval in every form because it's not based on performance or conditions. It's based on identity and identity is set because identity was spoken from the creator. And when the creator speaks, the creator speaks the truth and the truth doesn't change. Lucky. Okay.